Good morning and welcome to day two of Reset Week. And today's topic is Mindset Reset. I am so glad that you're here. And if you're watching on replay, um, welcome. I would love to know in the chat if you if you were here live yesterday and or if you watched the replay. Oh yay. If you watch you if you were here live yesterday or if you watched the replay from yesterday. What um I'm, trying, I'm shifting my mindset here. What was the thing that you decided that you could do yesterday to start taking care of that future version of yourself that is living that dream life? And I'm going to share mine because I literally did. And I talked about yesterday that one of my dreams is, can you guys hear me? I want to make sure that I'm not just talking to myself. Thumbs up. Yes, in the comments if you can hear me. Okay, thank you, Mama. Um, and yes, Mom, Zoom works if you're out on a walk. Um, so one of the things that I shared yesterday was one of my big dreams is to own a home or a condo or something on the beach. Like I want to have a beach house or a condo. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna be real picky about it. And I talked about how does that person that owns a beach house and can go to the go there anytime she wants, like how what how does she take care of herself? And one of the things was physically, like I want to be able to go out and wear a bathing suit and feel confident and all of these things. So that person takes care of her body and she works on being strong and um, flexible and can, you know, go out in the water and whatever. And I was tired yesterday. I got up at five and did these two calls and did work for my other stuff. And I was just tired and it got to be like four o'clock in the afternoon and I was sitting on the couch and I hadn't, I had done squats. I'm working on doing squats every day. I had done my squats but I didn't go for a walk. And I was like, I really like, there's no reason that I can't go for a walk. I just really don't want to. I'm cozy and warm on my couch. And then I thought about her. I thought about the Shanna that has a beach house that wants to wear a bathing suit out on the beach and feel confident and do all the things. And so I got up and I went for a walk at four o'clock in the afternoon. And I do not typically move my body that late in the day. And so I really did like, what, what does that version of me do? And she goes for the walk. She moves her body. Um, intentional first purposeful choices for health and wellness. Yes. I love that. Um, I also, I posted in the start where you're at Facebook group, a link to Okay, this is going to take too much away from my focus to try to do it right now. Um, I posted a link to a Spotify playlist that I started. So if you want, if you're on Spotify and you listen to your music on Spotify, feel free to go in, find that post in the Start Where You're At Facebook group and add your own songs that speak to you into that playlist. And how fun to share and maybe hear songs that we don't know about and that are encouraging and that speak life. Um, and Rattle was one of the songs that I added to it. <clears throat> so there's that. Um, anything else I wanted to touch on? Anybody else have something they did yesterday to care for their future self? I, I have been um, there are so many little things, little pieces that have kind of come together for this week and, um, what I wanted to offer and things like it kind of just, I decided to do this 
And I'm like, as I'm going along, I'm asking God, like, what, what do you want me to say? What, what do people need to hear in this moment? And I just feel like it's kind of all come together with the devotion that I found. And I like yesterday, today's mindset today is resetting your mindset, um, the way that we think. And there was a Bob Goff posted a, a picture on his Instagram or whoever works for Bob Goff and posts things, but it says we grow in our lives, what we plant in our hearts. And that goes right along with the mindset, like what we grow in our hearts is the way that we think. Um, so I just love that. And the devotion today went right along perfectly with what we're talking about. I've already posted that to the website. So if you want to see that, you can. Um, or if you're just reading it in the Bible app, which is awesome. Um, so it just, it, I love seeing how little tiny things are confirmations. And if you look for them, you will see them. Um, I feel like there was something else I wanted to say. I don't know. So yesterday, we t I talked about just kind of the general idea of self-care. And um, today, we're talking about taking care of our mind. And like we take care of our mind and our mind takes care of us. Um, and I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of like mindset stuff out there that can feel like and sound like, just think positive, just think positive thoughts, just be positive all the time because we always want to feel good. But that's toxic positivity. Like we don't always want to think positive, happy thoughts. Sometimes because we're humans, we want to feel sad or we want to feel angry or we want to feel like stressed. Sometimes stress is a good thing sometimes in the right circumstances, in the right dose, stress and anxiety can serve us. It's when we overdo them that they don't. So for example, when, if somebody that I love passes away or moves away from me or something tragic is happening to somebody that I love, I don't want to think positive thoughts about it. I don't want to feel happy about it. Like there are some things I want to feel sad about. We go to sad movies, we go to scary movies because sometimes we want to feel sad. Sometimes we want to feel scared and that anticipation and what is that word? Um, the anxiety, that's not the word I'm looking for, in um, the like the scary movies or the, it's anticipation, but it's another word I can think of. Um, so we don't always want to feel happy. We don't always want to be positive. Like that's, that is, that is toxic. We are human beings. So sometimes we're going to feel sad and sometimes we're going to feel angry. Sometimes we're going to feel lonely and we can't appreciate the opposite side of those things if we don't feel those things. So we can't appreciate joy and happiness if we don't know what sadness is. And it's kind of like the Bible, the, um, sin and the law, like until the law came about, we don't know about sin. So we can't know the negative until we know the positive and vice versa. So there's that in your Bible lesson for today, which I, again, stress, I am not a Bible scholar. I am not a Bible teacher. I am not, um, I'm just not, I'm just, I'm just a simple girl that loves Jesus. Um, so um thinking the way that we think everything everything that we do goes back to mindset our the way that we think controls everything and when we can grow 
and develop our mental resilience, we grow in all areas of our lives. I'm going to move my notes again because I keep looking back and forth and I don't like um, So when we grow our mental resilience, and which is the way that we think, like our, our mental selves is our mind, how we're thinking. And when we can grow in resilience in the way that we think, we grow in all of our areas. We grow more stable. We grow more peaceful. We go from being a roller coaster like this to gentle rolling hills. Um, that's kind of how I see it. And it this impacts every area of our life. In my in coaching, whether we are talking about weight loss or relationships of every kind, whether we're talking about the past past hurts or past failures, whether we're talking about money or jobs, decision-making, time management, no matter what, it all comes back to how we're thinking about it. Um, and I, there are so many directions that I could have gone with this. And I really was praying that God would show me like, help me focus because I can like babble and go in a bazillion different directions. And I really feel like from, because of the devotional, which just all goes together, it kind of, it helped me to bring it to a place that can be, that I can focus. So we're going to start with the big picture of mindset and how our thinking impacts our lives. And I meant to go in and open up my a document that I have. So the Bible says things about the way that we think. There are verses. <laughs> I made notes of them already. Okay. So in Romans, the Bible, God's word says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The, I think it's in Proverbs. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The Bible tells us in Philippians or eight, I believe, to think on what is true and pure and noble and praiseworthy and admirable and other things. <laughs> think on these things and the God of peace will guard your heart and your mind. There are so many things in the Bible that, that show us, um, Isaiah 26, three is one of my favorite verses. I will keep him, I will keep in perfect peace. Him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in me. When we are focused on God and putting our trust in him and we're thinking about all of the reasons that we trust him, that changes how we feel and how we respond to things. So the Bible backs all of this up. God created us to be thinking beings and to live in the world and be human. Um, so our mindset is everything. The way that we think is everything. Um, okay, get back to you. Okay, back to my big picture, like bringing this all together, big picture. In our devotions this week, we're talking, it's the devotion is called Greatly Loved by Hosanna Long. And in it, it's basically when we believe, when we know God's word and we know what God says about us and we believe it and you believe things that you tell yourself over and over and over again. And some things that we believe are not true. Like we, there are a lot of things about ourselves that we believe that are not true. There are things that we believe about other people and about the world that are not true. And we believe them because we keep thinking those things. We keep telling ourselves those things over and over and over again until at some point we realize maybe that's not true. Maybe there's something else that is true. 
and you get curious and you work on figuring that out and then you change your beliefs and it can be about anything. It happens all the time. Um, people thought the world was flat until they discovered it was round. They believed it was flat, but it was not. Um, so let's, let's work on one of the mindsets. Let's be curious. Let's be open and curious about things. Um, and that wasn't even in my notes. So big picture. The devotion we're doing is about God's love. You are greatly loved. God created you and said you are very good. He has loved you since the beginning, which never was. And he loves you until the end, which never is. He loves you always. And one of the things that yesterday the devotion said, he loves you while. It says, while you were still sinners, Christ died for you. He loves you while you're human, while you're sinning, while you're thinking terrible thoughts about your neighbor or yourself. He loves you. You are made in his image. You are chosen. You are worth fighting for, our devotion said today. You are redeemed. You are forgiven. You are um, all those things. So all of that is true about you, about me. And yet, because I think thoughts about myself that are not true, I think people don't like me. I think I can be too much. I think sometimes I think I'm evil because I can have really negative thoughts about things and people. I think I'm unworthy. I think I'm unlovable. I can think all of those things and none of them are true. So when I'm thinking that way, I feel defeated. I feel unloved. I feel unworthy. And then I act from those places. I act from feeling that, those ways. But when I believe that I am loved while I am chosen by the God, God who created the universe, who is the maker of all things, who is the giver of all good gifts. When I believe that I am loved with an everlasting love, I am a daughter of the king. I am a princess. I am the bride of Christ. I am a friend of God. How do I feel then? I feel loved, valued, treasured. I feel confident. I feel confident knowing that God is for me, that God has chosen me, that I'm here for a purpose. And then when I feel those ways, I act a completely different way than when I'm feeling defeated and hopeless and unloved and all of those things. So that's like, that's the big, when we can believe God's truth about us, then we are going to show up in a completely different way than when we're believing the lies that we tell ourselves, that we may have heard from other people, that Satan whispers into us because he knows who we are from day one of the devotion. The enemy of our soul knows the truth about us and he wants us to believe the lies. He does not want us to know and believe and walk in the truth about ourselves. Um, so when, when we know that and believe it and remind ourselves of it, then we show up in our lives, in our relationships, transformed. Um, Whoa, I typed, I typed my notes while I was on my phone and I have so many typos. I don't even know what I wrote. <laughs> Knowing and believing and focusing on who God says we are and who he says he is changes our perspective and it changes how we live. So 
bringing it down, narrowing it down a little bit and um, maybe fleshing it out a little bit, the way that we think determines how we feel. So like I said, when we think I am loved, I am chosen, I am a friend of God, I am ordained, I am here for such a time as this, that creates feelings of purpose and hope and power and authority. And we act out of the way that we feel. So we think a thought, we have a feeling, and that the, our feelings are what drive our actions. We don't always act out of our feelings because sometimes you, like, how often are you angry and you think, oh my word, I want to throat punch them, but you don't throat punch them. So you don't act out of the anger. You restrain yourself because you also have a feeling of maybe fear that you don't want to get arrested, right? So the fear drives the action of restraining yourself. So our, our thoughts are always creating feelings and our feelings are always driving our actions, the way that we behave. So when, and, and we're human, right? We have a bazillion thoughts a day. I don't, I've heard people say we have 60,000 thoughts a day. We have 30,000 thoughts a day. We have a bazillion thoughts a day. That's my technical number. And we're not always thinking them consciously. We have, we have a prefrontal cortex, which is our, like our adult um, intentional brain. And we have our basal, what's the name of it? I can't even think right now. We have a, our primal brain, which is that, that section of our brain is responsible for all of the, all of our um, involuntary, all of the involuntary actions of our body, respiration, um, our heart beating, all of the, our muscles, whatever, um, all of the involuntary actions of our brain. That's what our, the basal brain is, our primal brain. And it puts everything on repeat. It's on, it's all about habits. This is what I do. I don't think about it. I just do it. And a lot of our brains are, a lot of our thoughts are like that. They're on repeat. They're habitual. I think these things because I have always thought them and because I keep finding evidence to think them. And then I just, that's the, that's what I do. It's like driving on autopilot, getting to work and not remembering the drive. You're on autopilot. So when we are engaging our prefrontal cortex, our intentional goal-seeking brain, it takes a lot more energy for one thing, um, but we notice, oh my word, I'm feeling, I'm feeling defeated. And we can notice that and ask like, what am I thinking? Where, where are my thoughts going that are, that is creating this feeling of defeat? And you can, you can find them. It could be all, you know, the negative self-talk that is just on repeat. And so what it looks like to change our thoughts and reset our mindset is to remind ourselves of what is true. What is, yes, that's, um, that is a really good book. Um, now I'm trying to think of the author's name. I can't think of it. Anyway. Resetting our mindset is reminding ourselves of what is true, what is pure, what is lovely, what is noble, what is admirable. It's thinking on purpose to remind ourselves of who we are and who we want to be. And then the negative thoughts come in again, or somebody does something that we think is annoying and we feel annoyed. And then we can ruminate on how annoying that person is. And we can think about all of the things that they do that is so annoying. And we continue to feel annoyed 
And then you might get into feeling justified because obviously this person's annoying because they do all these things. And then we just feel annoyed and we're the ones that get to feel that way. So we can notice that like, oh, I'm feeling so annoyed. Why am I feeling annoyed? Oh, because I've just been rehearsing all of the things that my husband did that annoyed me yesterday. So of course I'm feeling annoyed. How do I want to feel? What do I want to feel about my husband? How do I want to feel in general? You decide that, and then what do I need to think to feel that way? What thought, what can I think about that makes me feel joy, peace, thankfulness, love, curiosity? Um, and one way to do this is like, if you have a hard time with it, say, I really want to feel joy. And I just can't think of a thought that makes me feel joy. Think about a time when you were like consumed with joy, when you felt so joyful. Think about that situation, go back in your mind, go back into that situation. And what were you thinking about? What was the circumstance? Who were you with? What were you thinking that created that feeling of joy? And can you practice that? Um, I'm going long. I don't want to go this long. Okay. So the way that we think creates how we feel. The way that we feel drives the things that we do and say. I'm going to, so practically like, okay, this is great information. How do you, how do you do this? So I use a tool called the creation cycle and it is, it's basically, um, it's CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, and it has been developed by, you know, several people. And then my mentor kind of put it into this creation cycle, which I love because it brings the creation into it and God is the creator and our thoughts create our lives. Um, so the creation cycle is you have a thought that creates a feeling that leads to all of the actions that you take. So Putting, so going from, I believe God loves me, all like all of these big beliefs, and then we want to narrow it down to one thought that creates one feeling, and then all of the things that we do or don't do from that feeling. And of course, I cannot think of an example. Um, let's see. Anybody have have something? Um, so if I'm thinking, my husband doesn't care about me. He he didn't he didn't do what he said he was going to do. He leaves his stuff all around the house. He doesn't ever ask me what I want. He doesn't do anything for me. He doesn't bring me flowers. I mean, like, whatever, I'm totally making this up. I'm thinking all of these thoughts about my husband. My husband doesn't care about me. How does that make me feel when I think that thought? I feel, I might feel neglected. And when I feel neglected, what do I do? I think of all of the ways that he neglects me and doesn't care about me. I bring up all of the evidence of it. I avoid him. I, what else do I do? I talk to my friends about it and my family. I tell my, I tell vent to other people. And 
what does that lead to? Like, my thought was, he doesn't care about me. And what ends up happening is I spiral down into this pit and I'm not caring about me. Like telling myself all of the ways that my husband does not care about me is not caring about myself. So if I can take that same situation, how do I want to feel? How do I want to feel about my husband? I want to feel connection. Okay, if I want to feel connection with my husband, what do I need to think? I need to remind myself like he loves me. He loves me. He chose me. He married me. Does he do annoying things? Of course. So do I. So he loves me. And I want to feel connection. I don't know that that really goes together, but. And then what do I do when I feel connected to my husband? I seek him out. I want to do things to help him or to serve him maybe. Um, I think about, okay, he does love me. He did this, he said this, he's this kind of person. I wanna remind myself of those things. And I literally, I do this every day. I keep a gratitude journal or not in my planner. I write five things every day that I'm thankful for that have happened in the past day. And my number one thing is always about my husband because I want to think positive, luscious, loving thoughts about my husband. I want to have gratitude towards my husband. And so that is one of the things that I do. And that is how I, how I create that feeling of love and gratitude is I think positive thoughts about him every day. Like I am so thankful that Jeremy blah, 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 every day. So your homework today is to practice doing a creation cycle. And if this does not make sense to you and you're, you want to try, but you're not quite sure, send me an email, hello at shannapizer.com or in the Facebook group, um, put a post in there and, and show us your creation cycle and I can kind of help you flesh it out. The most important thing is just to know that the way that we think determines how we feel and what we do. So we want to be thinking thoughts that are number one, true. If it's not true, it's a lie, but we also want it to be helpful. So is it true? And is it helpful? And just like the Bible says, think on these things. If, if it's not true and helpful, I want to find something else to think about. And that can shift how you feel and what you do. I hope this is helpful. <laughs> um, I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to see you post in the Facebook group, takeaways. Um, and also if you want to contribute to the Spotify playlist, that link, that post is in the Facebook group as well. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great day.